take a look at the actual application itself. Ah, there we go. Breeze Air Screen. This is what you'll see when you first open the program up. As I was mentioning before, here is my model properties panel here on the left hand side. I could quickly edit any information that I'd like to along here. It could be as simple as typing in a value if I wanted to change my receptor, uh, flagpole receptor heights, change my maximum distance to probe, analyze the meteorological data. All of that information is available in that model properties panel. And as I said before, I can move the panel around, I can resize it. If I wanted to dock it on top, or if I wanted to move and dock it over to the side of my application, I can do that. I also have the ability to make it minimized and go away. So I can hover over it now and it'll drop down for me. So you can dock and move that wherever you like to see it best. I also have my potential problems uh, window here. Right now it's hidden because this project that I happen to have open does not contain any potential problems. But if I were to make a change, for example, if I change my minimum distance to ambient air from 30 to 50 meters, it now lets me know something has changed in my project, uh, so I would need to rerun the model in order to see that impact upon my results. If I don't want to see the potential problems list anymore, you can just set it to hide and then it'll only appear when you hover over it. <clears throat> so within AirScreen, you have your control options, some basic options such as the units, uh, land use characteristics around the facility, and then how you want AirScreen to generate its automated receptor grid or how far out you would like to extend that. <clears throat> the source options here, are displayed. You select your source type and then followed by that type's individual properties. So whether it is point source, capped, horizontal, flare, volume, rectangular area, and circular area. One thing you may notice, a new feature, um, when using point sources, whether they're capped, horizontal, or vertical, you have the option to specify an ambient temperature, which will set the exact stack temperature to zero Kelvin, and then it will run uh, just as an air mod with whatever the ambient temperature happens to be at that moment. You can specify building information, and you may notice that in this case I'm using an existing BPIP input file. So you can either specify a single rectangular, rectangular building, or you can use an existing BPIP input file to generate that information. Finally, we have the terrain inputs. The first item is the source elevation, which is an optional feature, but is actually used as the profile base elevation in the current version of the EPS Airstream. And you can also choose to import your elevations from AirMap itself using a UTM easting and northing coordinate. And just as with the AirMap that is currently used in AirMod, it's the same executable. So you can choose between the digital elevation model data and the national elevation data set GeoTIFF files. In this case, I happen to use some DEM files um, that were associated with this information. The last tab is the meteorological data. And instead of using hourly raw meteorological data from an actual station somewhere out there, you just enter in some basic conditions or that are applied to your location. So in this case, a minimum and maximum temperature, the minimum wind speed that could occur at that location, as well as an anemometer height of where winds are being recorded. And then you can enter in some surface characteristics, whether it's using some seasonal table information in which you define a surface profile, such as the basic land use type around the facility, around the source. And then the climate profile, whether it is average, wet, or dry at that site. You can use an existing air surface output file if you'd like. Or in this project, I just used a uh, simple user-defined value for surface roughness, Bowen ratio, and albedo. So once you perform the model run, which is done by the little model run button here on the ribbon bar or on the quick access toolbar, you'll have access to that as well, your model completes. 
And when it completes, you get a nice zipped up project archive, just like in AirMod. For those of you who are using the Breeze AirMod product currently, we have the AMZ file there, which zips up all of the input and output into a nice package. And here we'll have the ASZ project archive, which stores all of the output and input information for you. So when I view my results, I see first a concentration versus distance plot which shows each of the receptors that were uh, calculated out by the AirScreen application with its automated receptor arrays. My flow sector analysis, which shows each of those 36 flow vectors with the concentration, the maximum concentration that was calculated um, at each of the 36 sectors. And then the flow sector analysis impact distance, which is going to be uh, the distance to which the maximum concentration was occurred. So these two play off of each other. We have the maximum concentration at each sector, and then the distance at which that maximum concentration occurred. The tabular data, like I mentioned before, you can sort by, uh, the, by each column. So you get an idea of where the distances are, what is the elevation at those points, what kind of season, monthly, or annual um, temporal variation we have. All of this information that's uh, readily available from the AirScreen application, but now in a nice sortable table that can also be exported as a Microsoft Excel spreadsheet so that you can do your own analyses wherever you might need to. And then we have each of the text files whether that is our own input file format, the EPA's input file format that is generated off of that file, a log of the run, which defines both the metric and English units. One nice feature about Breeze AirScreen is that we will actually save your English units. If that's how you choose to input the data, we will save that information to the input file, whereas the EPA's version will convert everything to metric. Then the raw output file, a basic plot file that is generated with your AirScreen results in each case. The run from the MakeMet log is also shown, as well as the worst case meteorological profile and surface file. So all of this information readily available from the uh, output information stored within Breeze AirScreen. There will also be integrated help in the program. It'll be its own working tab, which displays the user guide uh, for easy access with any questions that you may have. So using Breeze AirScreen is a uh, very simple application with uh, very powerful results. And even the results that you do generate, you can pretty quickly take the data that you've input into AirScreen and then just take that right into Breeze AirMod and start building your refined case off of that. It's very easy to move between the two programs because the input form file formats are so similar.